Welcome everyone to another live stream Tuesday. And today we are talking about candle rituals. Now, some of you may already be familiar with this, but I think for most of you guys who are interested in, uh, you know, who have been so focused in your feng shui journey, I just want to take your eyes off of external feng shui for a bit and then just share with you a tool that I have been used for quite a few years now. And just recently I've started to use it a little bit more. Uh, maybe about the last year and a half, I started using it a little bit more for myself. And uh, recently I've started doing it even on behalf of my clients as well. And we're talking about candle rituals. Now, just uh, really quickly, if you guys have any questions, I will go through them towards the end. But right now, let's go through some uh, basic introductions to what candle rituals are. So, fire has always been a powerful form of energy, right? Since fire was discovered in, you know, the caveman ages or whatever, it totally changed the way uh, we live our lives, right? The cavemen back then, they because they knew about fire now, they have light. They could cook their food and everything. But what does fire mean in spiritual work? Now, I'm not, I'm not a historian by any means, but just giving you an idea of how important fire ceremonies or fire rituals are in um, religious settings, spiritual settings, or even um, any uh, ceremonies outside of the mainstream uh, religious containers, let's say, okay? But just as... Um, just as examples to how fire rituals are so important, it is, uh, if you think about Hinduism, for instance, and I've actually participated in uh, Hindu fire rituals, I'd say close to 10 years now. Um, and I found them to be, to give me that additional boost in success. Obviously, and we'll talk about this a little bit more, you have to, just like how you have to meet the feng shui halfway, you also have to meet your fire ritual halfway or any other spiritual tools that you use. You don't expect them to work miracles in your life without you needing to do the work as well. Okay? Nothing's going to fall on your lap just because you lit a candle. However, if you, if you do the work that needs to be done, if you shift the external energy around you and you work with the internal energy around you towards the desire that you want to manifest, lighting that candle the right way, the right time, the right location will be that tipping point to help you manifest that desire. And I can tell you for, um, for the past few weeks now that I started doing um, a special fire ritual uh, with my clients that I'm starting to see long-term issues starting to come to an end. My clients are starting to see a resolution. And that was from all the weeks and the months and perhaps even years of them preparing the foundational work. And then the fire ritual comes in to give that additional boost, boost to help them cross the finish line, so to speak. A candle ritual is really powerful. And if you don't believe in candle rituals, answer me this. When it's your birthday, and there are candles on top of your birthday. Why do we make a wish before we blow out the candle, right? That has elements that's been taken from hundreds and thousands of years of using fire or candles to help bring about our desires, okay? So with this being said, like I mentioned earlier, a candle ritual or a fire ritual doesn't work simply because you build a fire or simply because you ignite a candle. It works because you are, it's, it's a, basically it's a marriage of your energy infused into the candle, your intention infused into the candle. So really what I'm trying to say 
is that the fire ritual or the candle ritual, I'm just going to say candle ritual, okay? What I'm trying to say and wanting to really hit home here is that a candle ritual is only as powerful as you are. Okay. So there needs to be there needs to be a few things that should be done before you light your candle. And those are my students who are in manifesting code, you know, you know, you've heard me talk about this before is that before you do a, a moon ritual or a candle ritual, try to cleanse yourself. Cleanse your aura, especially if it's been a stressful day. You don't want to just come through your door from, you know, a stressful day at work and then light a candle. No. You need to take some time to cleanse your own aura, either by meditation or taking a salt bath, you know, just, you know, soaking in the tub, putting Himalayan salt in it. If you have essential oils that are great for purifying, that's absolutely perfect. Or even lavender to help you calm, help you basically center yourself. And your space. Before I do my rituals, I like to cleanse my space as well. Um, and I've had a, I've had a, a previous live stream about cleansing a space, right? How do you cleanse a space? You can cleanse a space by using um, using crystals. You can cleanse the space with room sprays. Uh, cleanse the space with uh, incense. I love sandalwood incense. I also really love using resins. I use frankincense and myrrh. The smokier, the better, to be honest with you, where I am concerned. I like to smoke out the place, and then I do my candle ritual. Um, you can also smudge or use Palo Santo to, to cleanse the space. That's perfectly fine. Uh, but for me, you have, so energetically, you're setting your space. You're setting your energy, your centering yourself. For me, meditation is really, really important to at least just do a few minutes of it. And those of you who are in manifesting code who have or who have been doing, you know, meditation practices, do, doing some grounding work, some running energy, and also to basically, if this is all new to you uh, in terms of meditation, basically just sit as comfortably as you can, preferably on the ground or on the floor. And then imagine energy, you know, being connected between the center of the earth and your root chakra. So the energy is coming back and forth, cleansing your aura. Okay, whatever negative, you know, worries, fears, frustrations just goes zoop into the core of the earth and we'll let Mother Earth cleanse it for us. And then followed with you visualizing the universe showering, pouring its beautiful energy inside of you. Okay, so you can you can do um, I highly highly recommend doing that before you do any um, additional inner work. I do that before I do my Akashi records. I do that even it's my pre meditation meditation, <laughs> and before I do moon rituals or candle rituals. You guys who follow me in manifesting code, you know we do uh, running energy as well. So as promised. In my post, we were going. We are going to talk about colors. Um, actually, before I go for that, I want to show you guys uh, the types of candles that I use. So any candle will do, really. It doesn't have to be a, spe uh, a candle specifically from like a, a botanica uh, store. You can go to the dollar store. However, my preference is to have candles that are unscented. So this might be a little bit hard to find in regular stores. Why unscented? So that you can actually infuse the candle, not just with your own energy, but also with the power of scent, i.e. specifically essential oils, or even if you want to do herbs, certain herbs can attract certain properties as well. It's just too much for me to cover in like a short live stream, but you guys can look it up or you can join me later. <laughs> I do have a master class happening Thursday night. You can join me there and we'll go a little bit deeper. But an unscented candle for me is really, really important. So I have these. These are 
seven day candles and there are 14 day candles and 50 day candles as well. And this usually goes into a jar, a long jar. I'm not showing you the jar because the jar jars that I have right now, they're all currently burning for myself and for my clients. So I'm not moving them. I've placed them. I'm just going to leave it there as it burns. But these guys, you see how big they are. They, uh, they do burn for um, seven days. Supposedly, some do burn out by five. Um, but these are, these are my go-to really when I have something, um, that's kind of a long-term desire. So I, I do burn that for something that's kind of been stuck for a while. Um, I do that for myself and my clients. And I do like the bigger candles also because I can also inscribe, um, what I would like to happen. So for instance, if it is healing, if you're having issues with migraines, you know, you can, you know, just inscribe uh you know um a whole month without migraines or something like that right or if you're looking for a job you can inscribe you know i now you know highest and best job opportunity with a specific amount in terms of salary feel free to you know play around with it right so those are the pillar candles you can also use taper candles like this again they're all unscented this one I got from the grocery store, actually. Um, so people just use it for their dinner table. Um, this should take about four hours to burn. Um, so I use that and I have different three, I, I have other colors, but these are the ones that I can find because I just moved. <laughs> I have a whole other box of candles. I can't find them. So blue candles and we'll talk about can candle colors in a minute. So blue, uh, these are uh, four inches tall and they take about three, four hours to burn as well. Actually, this might take longer, probably six to eight hours, right? See the difference? In a pinch, tea light candles are great. And in fact, for my uh, special ritual, I use uh, butter lamp tea light candles, which are harder to find, but in... Um, uh, Hindu and Buddhist temples, they actually use ghee lamps and not wax like this. And it's in uh, little candle um, tea light containers like this as well. But in a pinch, if you can't find uh, ghee light, ghee tea light candles, the regular candles will work as well. This one I think I got from Ikea. Okay, a, a whole big bag of 100 candles. You can use this. And you can also find them in different colors. Again, we're going to talk about colors in a minute, but you can also find them in different colors that would align with your intention. Okay. Um, votive candles work really well. I personally like candles in a jar simply because I find it's less messy. I don't have to worry about the candles going all over the place. Um, and I also am starting to learn how to read the, the smoke of the jar when you're done. Um, so that's part of the reason why I personally like the uh, jar candles better. So this guy should take about four to six hours to burn. I mean, they're smaller votive candles as well. So with that being said, uh, we will talk about uh, locations to put in a home. It's not going to be specific it will be more generalized uh, because obviously there's you know but <laughs> there's going to be hundreds or you know hundreds of different layouts or whatever I can't be too specific but we will go general in terms of the location all right so candle color so white I have a white color here okay white is used for, I'm just looking at my notes in case you guys see me like looking sideways here. Okay. White is good to, it's for everyone I would say you need to have a white candle in your stash. It doesn't matter what you want to attract. White is a good general one. If in doubt in terms of the colors, go for white. White is also really good to repel destructive energies because it's pure and it contains um, positive virtues in its highest form. 
It's also great for purification, to raise vibrations. And I believe in most churches they use white. I'm not sure if it's white or cream. And it's also good to heal emotions. Okay, white candles. Red candles. I don't have red. Well, I had it. I can't find it. Red attracts and magnetizes. So many people use candle rituals for to attract uh, a passionate relationship. However, be careful because remember, you are charging the candle with your energy. Okay, you want to make sure that you are clear in what you want to attract. Do you want to attract just a passionate uh, relationship but no commitment? Right, you have to be clear what you are infusing into your candle. So be very careful with red. I actually do not use, um, do not recommend using red as much because it can actually give negative, negative results. So I would prefer that you guys just do your meditation visualization if attracting a relationship is what you want to do uh, instead of using a red candle. But it is highly sought after information so I'm just going to add the red here. If you want to use the red I would suggest using the lighter brighter red as opposed to the darker reds because the darker reds are a little bit more um, like the blood red I wouldn't use that okay leave that to the pros because again you could trigger negativity if you use that wrong. So red can also be used for protection to give you strength to infuse passion give you courage or help you remove blocks. So go for the brighter red if you really want to use red. Okay, black. This is another color that I don't use. Uh, personally, it scares me a little bit to be using black candles. Black, however, is not necessarily bad. Okay, it's absorb it absorbs and destroys negativity. For those who are who are in Wicca, uh, I believe they use black for they call banishing. I don't know much about that, uh, about what that entails, but black candles, I believe, is usually what they use. Um, you can also use it to heal severe diseases remo and remove obstacles. Um, again, be very, very careful with the black color, just like the blood red. Um, it's something that I would actually steer clear from. Okay. Light blue, I had a light blue, can't find it. Um, it's tranquility, healing, uh, patience, happiness. Okay. Dark blue um, helps you with initiating change, being a little bit more flexible. It helps you if you want to tap into your subconscious mind. Uh, blue helps with healing and inspiration. Blue is also a very spiritual um uh, base color, so spiritual well-being, if you want to seek wisdom, truth or light, uh, blue is a, like this one, this guy here, blue is a really good one to use. Gold, again, I had a gold candle, I couldn't find it. Gold is um, good for you to make smart, quick actions with a financial emphasis. So it means, um, it means it's it's it helps you trigger movement okay it also helps you attract happy active people to your life and also helps you expedite money that you know is coming but is kind of blocked because of let's say legal trouble uh, maybe you know um, someone owes you money but they're just being really you know not nice about it <laughs> you know it's money that's owed to you but it's not coming so it could be legal you know money owed to you or red tape for instance okay green I used to use a lot of green but not so much um, not nowadays green is great for finances it's also really good for fertility I know some of you ladies uh, recently on Instagram started asking me about my uh, fertility program so green is a really good uh, color to use when you're doing like a, a, a candle ritual based on you know wanting to conceive anything about um, growth, anything about increasing luck um, or finding job or like career related stuff, you can use green as well. Um, green being a wood element, it is also really good to combine it with herbs. Um, 
So um, herbs that are really good, for instance, for financial, you can use, uh, if you can find bayberry, that's hard to find. Uh, I haven't had bayberry in a while now. Um, you can also roll it. Um, how do you put herbs? It's basically like you'll anoint it with oil and you roll it in, uh, in the herbs. You can use uh, basil, you can use bay leaves, um, and then you burn it. Again, it has to be, it has to, every step has to be intentional, you guys, when it comes to your candle ritual. Even when you're um, anointing the candles, you know, using olive oil or sunflower oil or whatever it is, uh, and anointing with essential oils, the whole time you need to be thinking and focusing on that which you want to attract. Not just doing it absent-mindedly, okay? Very, very important. You can use pale green as well, also for growth, also for um, helping in terms of new projects. Uh, gray candles, it is harder to find gray. I haven't been able to see it outside of regular Botanica uh, stores, um, but gray is a, sim is a color of neutrality because it is a blend of black and white. So it is good for, it is used for attracting and repelling. It draws in undesirable energies and then sends it out into the universe for dispersal. Uh, and it's done either in a dis neither destructive nor constructive properties. It just merely, uh, merely dispersed, okay? Um, so when do you use gray? It will be if you believe you've been um, jinxed or hexed. Um, growing up in Southeast Asia, you know, I believe in these things. <laughs> you may think I'm weird, but um, then uh, gray candles can be used for that. Yellow is good for intellect and academics. So it's good for you students out there. Also good for attraction, confidence, um, emotional health, and success. Brown uh, helps you uh, ground your center and get more connected to the earth because brown is earth tones. Um, some people use brown for animals. So for instance, if your animal is, uh, is sick, I've known people to, to have used brown candles for that. Uh, pink. Pink is spiritual, emotional love. Uh, workings uh, that doesn't have sexual connotation. So if you, um, if you, for instance, uh, your love for your children, your love for your um, your siblings, your love for your parents, there, it's intense love, but no, you know, it's not sexual, right? So you can burn pink candles towards those kinds of relationships. It's also good for uh, anything around intentions around self-love, around commitment, around friendship, uh, and to start a relationship. So I actually prefer to use a pink candle rather than a red candle, okay, if you want to initiate relationships. Orange. Orange is a blend of red and yellow. So it kind of has the best of both worlds, just like the gray is a blend of black and white, right? Um, so yellow is mental agility. Remember yellow is great for students or academics, right? And it combines with the red, which is action energy. So it's great for, uh, prosperity, energy building, uh, attracting other people who also have like high vibration, you know, happy people. Um, it builds vitality and stamina, which also then leads to physical action towards a desired goal. Purple. Now purple um, is the color of expansion in all forms. It can be your health, it can be your relationship, your business, your spirituality. But uh, the way I've been taught is that be careful with purple because it expands what you already have. Okay, so if you are if you are wallowing in bills, uh, you're living paycheck to paycheck, and you use purple to 
you know, supposedly to increase uh, business, for instance, you're only most likely going to actually increase the bills. So you use the purple when you're already seeing forward momentum. So for instance, you're, you're starting to, um, let's say if you're a retail store and you're starting to get like $3,000 a day and you use the purple candle so that you get more $3,000, $4,000, $5,000 a day, right? Something like that. So this one is expansion but it can be positive expansion it could be negative expansion so be careful with purple it simply gives you more of what you already have okay um and silver is um astral energies you can use finances as well now there's some obviously there are other schools or other practitioners who may disagree with my guidelines here Feel free to experiment, not with the blood red or the black. <laughs> Don't experiment with those. But where finances is concerned, I know green is what mainstream usually says. It's the color to use. You can still use it. But if you really think back uh, to traditional um, societies, right, green is not the color of money it's gold and silver so really for financial goals i would go for a green oh sorry a silver or a gold candle over the green candle okay and so where to place it where to place it it's going to be uh quick and dirty with this one especially if you guys have been following me hopefully you have been following flying star feng shui if not, read up on flying star feng shui. At the very least, read up on where the flying stars are this year in 2019. So annual or permanent flying star, um, if you guys know your permanent energies, those of you who took my course, <laughs> or you guys who are more self-taught but advanced in your flying star knowledge, you can do your uh, candle burning in uh, flying star numbers that would support that. So for instance, for, uh, for career advancement, for instance, I tend to like to go for um, where the number one, and the, I really should have a chart actually. Um, so the number one and the six is really good for career. Uh, number one this year is in uh, in the west number six is in the east okay so you can place the candles there uh, for general prosperity you can burn them in the number eight or the number nine location this year the number eight is in the center the number nine is in the northwest if you're wanting to attract relationship or activate creativity activate your academics um, you can burn the candles where the number four is, which is in the north this year. If you are having legal issues or if you're having fights or there's a lot of disharmony at home, then you can do your candle ritual um, to, uh, to burn it in the south. If you're having issues with uh, petty people, with backstabbing, with office politics, if you're having issues with something that's lost, and maybe you want to help in meditating and like trying to backtrack and figure out where you lost the thing or where it's placed, um, then you can use the Southeast. If you want just general, even general protection, any other words, I'm fine with using it in the Southwest, even with the number five being there. Okay, the number five in the Southwest and the number two in the Northeast I'm still okay with using the candles if, so there's a caveat, if they're shorter burning candles. So I would do these little guys, okay, or small or smaller votive candles. I would not, okay, for Southwest, which has the number five this year, and the Northeast, which has the number two this year, I would not go for the Novena candles or the, uh, what's called the, the, the long burning candles, the seven day or the 15 or even, uh, sorry, 14, I believe there's 50 day candles as well. I would not do that in the Southwest or the
the Northeast, specifically the Southwest, because the number five is there. Okay. Um, so that is for the permanent flying star. If you guys follow the monthly flying star, you can do that as well. Um, my Feng Shui and Astrology calendar has the monthly chart, so you guys can follow that. Um, and if you're advanced enough to even know the daily stars, then you can plan ahead. With that in mind, another way to time your candle ritual can also be based on the moon cycle, right? So between the new moon, which is dark moon, to uh, full moon, so that's where the moon is not visible, right? It's dark, and it's slowly increasing in strength to, towards full moon. That is a good time to do a candle ritual about increasing, about attracting, okay? When it's full moon, so that's, con that's considered waxing, okay? The moon is waxing in the waxing phase. When it's full moon and it's going towards new moon, it's in the waning phase. So you see the slice of the moon, the visible moon getting smaller and smaller. That's a good time to do a candle ritual for removing things. So for instance, healing, right? Uh, you want to remove illness or you want to... Um, you want to remove pain or remove confusion or whatever. That's a good time to do that. Okay? And those of you who follow Qiman, uh, which is another school of Feng Shui, it's kind of like the sister school of Flying Star. Those of you guys who follow Qiman Dunjia, um, then you can, when you do your candle ritual, then you can base, base it on how you sit backing on to the deities, right? I'm not gonna go into Chimandunja right now. Those of you in Elite and Platinum Elite Manifesting Code get that on a monthly basis. I tell you what the energies are. Um, then you can do your candle ritual, even your meditation really. It doesn't have to be a candle ritual. You can do your meditation sitting a specific direction and doing your prayer, your candle ritual, your meditation, your visualization that way, okay? So we are at woo, almost 40 minutes, and that's all the notes that I have for this one. It is Candle Ritual 101, okay? But the important thing is, let's recap everything. Important thing is, cleanse your space, cleanse yourself before you do the candle ritual. Because once you choose your candle, and let's say you choose a moon cycle, and you're sitting down there, you're holding your candle, you're meditating, you're visualizing that which you want to attract, the candle will work better if your energy and your intention is clear. Okay? Your meditation visualization doesn't have to be long. It can be just a few minutes as long as it's focused. The energy is focused. Then you light the candle. You can sit with the candle if you want, just looking at um, looking at the flames, looking at how it flickers. Um, and in fact, if you guys want to, uh, if you guys want to join me in my candle ritual, which is happening Thursday night, I believe seven or seven thirty p.m. Eastern time, you can go to bit.ly at candle sorry slash candle ritual. Go there, bit.ly slash candle ritual. There is a registration to join me in that one, or you can join me in Manifesting Code, where Manifesting Code members get this for free. Basically, every month when I do master classes, it will be for free. So the candle ritual master class, we're gonna go deeper in terms of timing, how to use your candle rituals. We're gonna go deeper into how to read the flames and how to uh, read the, um, the smoke. And, uh, and there's gonna be a workbook or a guidebook that helps you with that. And at the end of the masterclass, you're actually going to also learn how to, um, how to build your own candle ritual. Because personally, rituals like this, it is, it should be personal. So you will learn a step-by-step -step guide as to how 
to build your own candle ritual to align with whatever desires it is that you want to manifest. So again, bit.ly slash candle ritual. If you guys want to join me in the masterclass, it should take about two hours, but you guys get the, you guys will get the recording. Uh, we'll have a Q and a, uh, and, and, and the worksheet in terms of how to build your own candle rituals. If you want to change your life, you guys, you, there are no shortcuts. Okay. There are no shortcuts. However, doing the feng shui and doing the inner work is it shortens your path to getting from where you are to where you want to be. Not necessarily a shortcut, but it just shortens your journey. So you don't have to spend as much time, you don't have to spend as much energy to get to that destination that you so desire and so deserve for yourself and your family. Okay, thanks so much for joining me, you guys. I will see you guys in the next live stream and hopefully some of you guys will join me in the masterclass on Thursday night. Take care. Hello, this is Safrina Kadri from Feng Shui and Prosper and welcome to my YouTube channel. If you like what you've seen, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I do try to put out a brand new video every week. So if you subscribe, then you can make sure that you don't miss out on any of the other uh, content that will be coming out your way.